Hi everybody, thanks for checking out Dirty Tricks Volume 3 here on Games for Gamers. Today's background music is brought to you by the best melodic dubstep mix of 2014. It's some music that I've used before in a few of the videos. It's pretty good for this one. So before I jump into the meat of this video here with Dirty Tricks Volume 3, I just wanted to go ahead and give a moment of silence to my car. My 1996 black stick shift Firebird. Wanted to go ahead and give it a quick little moment of silence as the car will be leaving me today after I go into work. I will be driving into work and at lunch I will be getting the second new car of my adulthood. Uh, my Firebird has lasted me from 1996 until today. So that is 19 years and a few months of service. It was a new car for me in May of 96. And it literally was with me when I left college. It has been with me on every single job. Multiple girlfriends, multiple road trips up and down the East Coast. So just want to give a quick little moment of silence for the end of an era for me. The Firebird goes away today. And I will introduce the channel to my new car in an upcoming video. I think everybody will like it. So, quick little moment of silence for the Firebird. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into Dirty Tricks Volume 3. Now, I've sort of hinted at this volume for some time now. I've dared you to wait for it. I said you might have a devil of a time guessing as to what I'm going to do. So probably you've got it now and you're thinking, seriously? Did, did some kind of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. update hit Marvel that I don't know about? Why is he doing a video on Daredevil? Well, I'm going to show you, and there is a reason why this is a Dirty Tricks volume, because one ISO makes four different styles of gameplay with our boy Daredevil possible. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm still going to leave you in a little bit of suspense by showing you my agent's kit and hafe first, and then we'll jump into Daredevil. There is only one ISO that makes this all possible. Otherwise, Daredevil is just simply what you would expect. An underrated, underwhelmed, underused, kind of nobody-ish that does a little bit of internal bleeding. So... For my agent, he is running the scrapper suit that is basically Mini Me Hafe. He's running the Raf Shank, which is also Mini Me Hafe, but it also applies pin cushion. The weather control device, the blind justice, and the Noro Purge. The Noro Purge is here for pressure points. Off balance is also not too bad of a thing. Hafe, we know what he is. This is my PvP Hafe. But there is one thing that I would change when running him with Daredevil. I would honestly swap the uh, knocking and the pressurized ISOs here. I would put pressurized in the one slot and I would put the knocking in the iron fist slot. Oh yes, and by the way, my agent is running the blind justice, which is the themed weapon uh, for Daredevil, it's, you know, similar to a cop's tonfa or nightstick, but this is for use with Daredevil. Daredevil comes in a multitude of flavors. He has his chapter mastery suit, which is both scrapper and tactician. I have him with some fatties now just to give him a little bit of help. I have not properly ISO'd him, but he had some accuracy issues. So you will see here in his chapter mastery is that all attacks gain true strike and he is immune to blind effects. He's immune to fear effects. He's a master assassin and his scrapper suit, I have him running the offensive fighter. If we look at his stock suit, we'll see that he gains the blind sight and the man without fear. But... He does not have the Master Assassin, which is a 20% chance to perform a preemptive counter against melee attacks, and he will avoid them. Honestly, you could certainly make a case for not bringing the suit. 
and uh, just slotting the aggressive ISO here and the one in the store. Now, what I would recommend if you are running the Chapter Mastery suit, if you go Tactician, you may want to drop the 30 gold and get the one that is in the store for him. And that is this one called the Assailing. Chance to perform a follow-up attack against weak and exposed. So basically pressure points. That's where the Neuro Purge comes in. And that's where Haif running pressurized on his level 1 comes in. Also Daredevil puts out pressure points on his level 1. But if you are running the Scrapper version, I would stick with the Aggressive. The man Rikasari, his level 9, there is an ISO out there that says this becomes a hemorrhaging attack along with a Paragon Exploiter. This is not the big ISO, but it is handy to have. I just happened to gain it today. I have Grace on his radar sense because there's no other thing you want to put here. Billy Club gains incapacitation because the only thing you could put here is either wide open or in cap. This one right here, this is what makes all four of these styles possible. The Reckless Augmented ISO 8, it is slotted on Snapkick and it says that it applies Reckless Rage. Snapkick is the pivotal ability in all of these teams. It applies Hobbled, which shuts down people like Quicksilver, being stealthy among others. It shuts down Infiltrators. It creates a fumbling scenario, and it does this thing called Reckless Rage, and you're probably going to say, wait a minute, Napalm, I don't get it. Why are you so happy about turning people into scrappers? You're basically giving people close quarters combat. Yes and no, I am, but it is a greatly reduced chance to hit. So accuracy goes in the toilet on the follow-up, and you still might be thinking, I don't get it. Why do you want to risk... Uh, another nano plague and generalized from Pesty, or another magic missile from uh, Enchantress, or another tag team from Quicksilver. Well, there's a reason. In this first setup, it creates a scenario where Iron Fist can be jumping in and stopping the follow up attack. Unfortunately, everybody on the other side gets to go first. So. What we're going to go ahead and do is pick up a natural close quarters combat by stealthily hitting the infiltrator. So now he has a stack of internal bleeding and he has the reckless rage for Haif. I'm going to go ahead and get some immunities and a big heal going because we are actually fairly hurt. On my agent I'm going to lead with the Noro Purge which will remove some buffs. It will possibly create despair, but it will push out, put out pressure points, and I'm going to give us the Blind Justice. This is similar to the Ares, Mental Coronation, Star-Lord, Sif with the ISO passive. This creates a scenario where other people may join in on attacks or counterattack. So the Power Armor swings and misses. The Hydra Vanguard is going to attempt to be a scrapper but he gets screwed with that and here we see why we bring this iso to the table we get a brawl from the nightstick and we get a raft shank and a hay firing off because of the attempt at doing a follow-up now because of the nightstick daredevil has applied a free stack of bleeds now we're going to hit him with the reckless rage and follow up with another attempt at bleeds. Haif is just going to go ahead and try to in-cap the power armor. On my agent's turn, I'm going to give us a little bit of a heal. That's why the weather control device is here. It's a quick action heal. And bleeds if we need it. And I'm going to do the blind justice again because this buff falls off after one round. We get a nice little follow-up. Power Armor attempts to attack. So Sin shoots and, gain, and bleeds out because of it. Now she attempted a follow-up. And the Raft Shank and Iron Fist have jumped in and smacked it. She now takes extra damage due to Pincushion. 
He applies a free set of internal bleeding. She now bleeds out even more. She attempts an extra turn. She gets haif. She gets the raft shank. All of this is from the Reckless Rage ISO. So she is literally washing up upon the shore of your counters. So she is suiciding due to Reckless Rage. <clears throat> In this particular case, she's suiciding because of all the combo breakers. So we're going to go ahead and change this up now for Style 2. Style 2 is all about the bleeds. This is all about bleeding to death. So we are going to go with his fellow friend. We're going to bring Jennifer Garner in here. We're going to bring Electra for more internal bleeding. We are going to switch my agent over to the bruiser suit. We're going to take out the raft shank and bring in the store purchased iron star. This is a key weapon for going this style of group. So by bringing Electra and Daredevil, we now set up multiple ways of applying internal bleeding, which is not removable. So you don't need Pesty, you don't need the scroll. Electra also gives us a flank and she gives us an assassinate. So for my agent, I will lead with the Noro Purge and I will set us up for the Blind Justice, which sometimes I want to call it Justice for All thanks to Metallica. Alright, he's going to go stealthy. He's going to give us some stamina back. We are going to get a natural close quarters combat off of the Hydra Vanguard. And of course he whiffs again. But now she joins in and she whiffs. So we are going to use her AoE to apply a stealthy hobbled. Internal bleeding and ravage. This means everything my team does is now going to tick for more. So everybody's bleeding and everybody's taking bonus damage. So as we can see, she's paying for all of this. But now so is my agent. We get a free counter, so more internal bleeding. And my agent is slowly... Ticking down and wilting under the fire of a blaster. The power armor jumps in. The Hydra Vanguard jumps in. They all bleed for that. Alright, so we are going to go ahead and do the Warm Zephyr to heal us up. Now, unfortunately, I did not gain any extra turns from tanking. So I'm not going to use the Iron Star. I'm going to refresh... My little Berserk buff over here. And we can see Daredevil's jumped in on it. We're now going to hit Sin with the Reckless Rage. And we still whiff on the follow-up. Which is getting really disgusting. The Stun Baton does not work. Looking at the bleeds, we have one over there. And we have two over there. So, because we have the Infiltrator, I don't need to apply the Flanked. I'm going to go ahead and do one more AoE. So now Sin has three and the Hydra Vanguard has two. She's, Sin is just bleeding out for all of these actions. So that follow-up is a miss. And now she gets countered because of it. She's going to attempt to follow up on that AoE and she's going to bleed out because of it. So this ISO is really great for AoEers. Because it makes them attempt to follow up on even their AoE attacks. And that causes them just to bleed out over here. And we have that bonus to bleed. So we have taken her down 11,000 hit points just by acting. Imagine if that is Quicksilver. Or imagine if that is Enchantress with a bunch of magic missile charges. They will just destroy themselves for it. So over here, we still have close quarters comp. Oh no, actually we don't. So we're going to regain that off of the Hydra Vanguard and potentially kill him. Electra jumps in thanks to the passive. And we are just going to attempt to assassinate the power armor. Which we don't do. We will, this time, let's check out his, he doesn't really have pressure points, he doesn't bleed, so Manrika Sari is not going to exploit anything. So now we should be able to assassinate him. 
So this is style two, the bleed to death style. You don't even need to lock in the bleeds, they lock themselves in. Plus these two, of course, gain, uh, this is pretty good for PvE and PvP. Defensively, Electra knows what she's doing, her AI is pretty solid. However, we don't really know how Daredevil is going to run, and we don't know if he's going to do the right moves. Now we're going to go to Style 3. This is called the Pit of Despair. We move one over, and we take Electra out, and we move in Ares. We're going to leave my agent exactly the way he is. And this style uses Ares and Gamora to make sure that this team can never get ahead of your Eternal Bleeding. Uh, with the eternal and internal bleeding, basically, people will bleed to death, leaving the only recourse is to heal. Well, thanks to Ares and or Gamora, they are going to prevent that. So once again, we go to the Hydra Vanguard to get the close quarters combat. Ares, we're going to treat him like he's in a PvP scenario. He's going to use the gun which can be slotted with disadvantage if you get the ISO from the Iron Patriot fight. That is a really good way to go for him. And since we are pretending this is PvP, we will go with Crush Your Enemies. Because why not? That's what he would do. So we 10,000 yard stairs the Vanguard. My agent attempts to tank. There's that follow-up, which makes him bleed out. And now we get the extra turn, so this is great. We're going to lead with the Noro Purge. This puts out pressure points. We are going to do the Blind Justice, which adds another passive, just like Ares gives us. But now, since a few people are bleeding, we could go ahead and apply the Iron Star. This is going to make people take more damage from bleeding and make any of their bleeds hemorrhage immediately. Unfortunately, of course, we know this is going to piss Sin off. But my agent is nice and tanking over here. And Ares jumps in and applies some bleeds and applies the Ravaged and the Tenderized and everything. So, because we have the close quarters combat from the Infiltrator, we're going to hit Sin with the Reckless Rage. And we're going to whiff on the internal bleeding again. You would honestly think the Reckless Rage applies to him sometimes. I'm going to go for the power armor because we have no choice. And this is where things get interesting. So Ares on the field brings Tenderized and Ravage. Ravage we know is a huge boon to this team. But this is going to pretend to be PvP, so there is Despair. Now, if this was a PvP team, they will never be able to get ahead of your bleed damage. So... For my agent, we are going to... We don't really need to heal quite yet. So we will continue to get the Blind Justice passive. Nobody jumps in. Here comes the Hurl. And Sin goes for Ares with a nice blaster on Bruiser Crit. Now her follow-up, of course, failed. And she's bleeding out for it. And she takes an Art of War Retaliation. She tries a suppressed on my agent. There's the follow-up. There's a counter brawl. And I wonder if the follow-up makes the game think you have attempted to tank another time. And that's why the bruiser suit comes in really handy for this. So if we look at Daredevil, his scrapper stacks are at 5. So he's jacked his attack up 5 from that ISO. Uh, he still has close quarters combat, so once again, we're going to try to double smack Sin. We should have applied a lot of pressure points. She's now at two stacks of internal bleeding and one stack of normal bleeds. If they were to attempt to cleanse right now, the uh, internal bleeding would stay, but the normal bleeds would fall off. And honestly, the reckless rage would fall off too. So, for my agent, we're going to heal. And we're going to go ahead and keep that uh, Justice for All going, but nope. Or Blind Justice, I should say. I always do that. 
So here's Sin. She takes her two stacks of bleeds with the normal stack. She's taking all this extra damage from all these extra attacks. Now you'll notice nobody's jumping in. That is because we did not have the stamina to do the blind justice. But she is much like the other styles for this team. She is suiciding just by doing her actions. So this runs a really good counter to the Quick Lord teams. If you can survive, they will kill themselves in attempting to do what that team does. And that is do an incredible amount of follow-up. So we're just going to man Ricky that power armor out. And that's a pretty solid hit. That's really nice to see. For this guy, we don't have enough stamina to do the gun. So we'll just make him bleed, give him the bonus damage. Attacks with the flesh wound, which of course gives us close quarters combat. Neuro purge for some debuffs. And you know what? Let's smack him with the iron star just for fun. Let's see how much man... So Man Ricky's going to do a solid amount of damage here. And that's the end of that. So that's the Pit of Despair style. Uh, I'm going to show you the final style, which is actually going to show up in its own video, which will be Dirty Tricks Volume 4, but you're going to get a sneak peek of it in this one. First, we will stop off at Gamora and discuss what she brings as compared to Ares. So Gamora, we do know, of course, comes in her stock style, which is Tactician. When she is a Tactician, she has Master Assassin, just like uh, Daredevil, but it rarely ever seems to go off. But all allies gain True Strike, which, you know, of course, Daredevil has himself, but now your agent would get it. Over here on Guardian Gamora, she becomes a member of the Guardian of the Galaxy, she still retains her passives, um, but the guaranteed to hit only works on Guardians of the Galaxy. She brings Mortal Strike to the table, which does a stack of bleeds, but also does Doom. Demoralizing Shout is just like um, Ares in the fact that it brings Doom to the table. By bringing um, Doom and Despair to the table... That's just more pain for the enemy team. We do know that on defense, the AI is not going to rest to get around the Doom. Whirlwind further prevents buff and heal abilities. So we're really locking down the healing. And they won't even be able to use an improbability field and create a Terrazing boost. But that would be a waste anyway because of the despair. And of course, like Electra, she brings an Execute. So she's about as solid of a choice as Ares is. But we are going to come all the way over to one of the newest characters, and we are going to bring Quake. By bringing Quake, we are going to do the Fumble Flanked Eternal Setup from Hell. Basically, when somebody has flanked on their level 1, and they are hit by somebody who is fumbling, they're going to counter with Flanked, which will apply Flanked for free. So what we are going to do here on my agent is we are going to take out the Iron Star and we are going to bring in the Vibra Crescent. Alternatively, you could bring in the Chitter Chatterbox, but the Vibra Crescent has a few things over the Chitter Chatterbox and the fact that it causes bleeds and it has a pre-counter. That pre-counter will apply the bleeds and it will apply the flanked. We will stick with the Bruiser Suit because of the chance for an extra turn. You could always go tactician style and try to get your extra turns that way. So this will be the final style and this is called the Eternal Flight and Fumbling Battle. So because she goes first, she will hit the power armor setting up a flanked attack. The power armor would tank that so I have no choice. If I could get to Sin, I would, but I can't. So Sin going early is going to put a hurt on my bruiser, which kind of sucks. And the power armor joins in. So now, 
He's stealthy. If I were to hit the power armor, I would apply the fumbling, the berserk, but no bleeds, but I would apply pressure points, so why not? I'm going to go for it. Unfortunately, the follow-up misses, so my agent is not really going to be able to get in on this right now because of the death that he's currently taking, so we will apply this. Now, because of the flanked, Quake will go ahead and hit the power armor with the two, and she will follow up and reapply the flanked, which missed, so no, it won't. My follow-ups on my side have not been doing particularly good, but Daredevil gets a free counter over there. So he's now applied pressure points, and Sin is still attempting to go to town. But she gets an extra turn, thanks to being a tactician against the blaster, so we will hit her AoE. So there's that aftershock. And the grenade whiffs. So, if we look at the power armor, he is fumbling, but the flanked has gone away. So, we will get a natural close quarter combat off the Hydra Vanguard, and he's up next. And we fail to apply the bleeds again. I don't know why the follow-ups are such low stamina over here. So, we will do the blind justice to try to get the passives going. And we've almost taken out the power armor. So I'm going to go ahead and do another AoE just to take the power armor out. The aftershock ticks down. She throws knives. And she gets her reinforcements back, which is not that good for us because they came in a pretty good help. But let's get that flanked going. And now, Sin is flanked. That's good. And she's taking some passives from the Nightstick. So we're going to go ahead and apply that Reckless Rage. We're going to go apply some internal bleeding. Or we're just going to fucking whiff again. And she's... Alright, so she's reapplied the flank. Ah! So everybody's getting in on it, but we're all missing like freaking crazy over here. So let's heal... And we're going to go ahead and get the Blind Justice going. Daisy Dukes Johnson over here is going to rest. So there's that attempt at a follow-up. And because of that, the fumbling Quake gets pissed and she is reapplied flanked. Unfortunately, we cannot get to her that way because of the power armor. So we'll just apply AoE. And down Sin goes. And there's that aftershock just ticking away, ticking away. So he is flanked, but he does not really have a lot of pressure points. So we're not going to go ahead and apply the Man Ricky. But he's taken out. The aftershock just goes. By the way, that ability there from Quake says, yeah, uh, your melee, you can't do it. So that really, really helps a lot of things in the current meta. And we'll do the flanked and bleeding from the Viber Crescent. Quake is going to have to rest again. And this will re-give us some stamina. Perfectly timed. And if we look, there are some pressure points. So let's go for the big Man Ricky finish. And we get it to a certain degree. So there is the four styles of dirty tricks in volume three. Style one, wash upon the wave of pre-counters, the raft shank, the scrapper suit, haif. Fumbling just creates that scenario where you get a lot of attacks and the reckless rage is an attempt at close quarters combat which haif will pick apart. If you wanted to use it against things in the current meta, switch haif over to scrapper and go to town on Enchantress. When you face Quicksilver teams, if Quicksilver is a scrapper, it doesn't matter, but you lose the Enrage. If you face Blaster Star-Lords and Blaster Agents, you're now coming out ahead because you're not going to get crit. If you fight Null and Kurth teams, yeah, you're, you're going to have a little issue having so many scrappers. 
kind of not re recommended if that's your meta. Style number two, of course, we saw is the heavy internal bleeding along with Ravage. So that basically creates a scenario where people are just falling to pieces because they're shooting blood. Well, actually, they're shooting blood from their kidneys. Ow, my liver. My liver, if you remember Beavis and Butthead. Electra is really good for that. You're bringing an infiltrator to a meta where there's not a whole lot of scrappers going on right now. She sets up a flank, she sets up an assassinate, she has a stealthy AoE wave applying, you know, setting up those bleeds. Great for the Quick Lord teams. Also pretty solid for Enchantress because she's just going to bleed out for everything she's doing. However, without despair, Enchantress will probably stay ahead of your bleeds, but this is where Ravaged may help you out. Style number three, the Pit of Despair. This is basically a slow attrition battle. People are going to bleed out and they're not going to be able to heal to recover from it. So the Warm Zephyr goes out. The Improbability Field goes out. The Sympathy Isos go out. The Light Fantastic goes out. People will bleed out and unless the Eternal Bleeds naturally expire... They will have no choice but to eventually get to their demise. You can certainly accelerate it with the Iron Star and other hemorrhaging attacks. You have Ares and you have Gamora for that. So there's some flexibility there. And of course, number four is the flanked fumbling scenario. That is where fumbling hits somebody who has flanked on their level one like Ultimate Spider-Man or excuse me, Superior Spider-Man and Quake, and that is where you get to apply the flank for free, which then sets up Daredevil for more attacks, and he can continually apply the Reckless Rage, and also apply Pressure Points, and the Eternal Bleeding. Um, again, Hafe on the enemy side can prevent, you know, present a little bit of an issue for this, but Style 1, where you have your own Hafe, you're going to come out the winner of that one. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Say goodbye to my 96 Firebird with me, and say goodbye to The Wait for Dirty Tricks Volume 3. I know it's a long one, but it gives you a lot to digest, and it shows you just how you can really dig down to one or two things and pull a character out of the absolute shit pit and turn him into something very interesting. So, hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. Take care.